Shivani, and in today's video, we are gonna be talking about teaching kids with Down syndrome how to read. Okay, so I know a lot of you guys that watch my channel are really interested in homeschooling kids with special needs, teaching kids with special needs. So what I did for you guys is I contacted a lot of my friends, homeschool parents that do have kids with disabilities, special needs, and there is a playlist down in the description box below. So if you're looking for one in particular, for example, autism, ADHD, you're gonna find a parent down there, a homeschool parent that is raising their kids and educating their kids with that disability. To give you guys some ideas, some tips, support, all the things that you would wanna hear from a parent that's been there, done that, is doing that. Obviously, I am doing Down Syndrome because obviously, I really wanna be able to teach my daughter how to read. I wanna teach her some math skills. I wanna teach her how to thrive, succeed in this life. So first, I'm just gonna to touch on the environment, the location. Of course, I'm a homeschool mom, and my location is my house. Now in the classroom, there's always the classroom. But of course, you want it to be saturated with different materials, things that they can explore, discover, get their hands on, as you can kind of see behind me. You also need a place where they can learn and communicate. Communication in and of itself when it comes to a child with Down syndrome is very unique because a lot of them take a long time for them to be able to speak so they skip over that developmental age where they're speaking. As I was talking to my speech therapist the other day, we were discussing this idea that kids with Down syndrome tend to be visual learners. They learn sight words and they just memorize the words as opposed to really developing that phonic awareness. Now, eventually, and yes, they a lot of them will learn how to read phonetically, but it's always good to start off with that visual learning stage with the sight words. But before they learn how to read, it's really important that they develop those skills of communication, even if it's not verbal communication. So for example, taking turns. It's a little activity that you can do with your kid to see if they're able to communicate with you, and it's basically copying and repeating. So if you pick up a rock, they pick up a rock. If you put down a rock, they put down a rock. You blow on a sheet of paper, they blow on a sheet of paper. You do a little dance, it's almost like copy and repeat. And that is a form of communication. Of course, there is the obvious when your child is hungry, they may use sign language like eat or more, please, those kind of simple things. Of course, there's always them grabbing your hand and dragging you over to the pantry and pointing at the food that they wanna eat and just going, that or grunting, okay? That's all communication. And once they have that communication, they are capable of understanding how to read. Let's just talk about Down syndrome and some of the uh, typical behaviors. So the first one I wanna talk about is the learned helplessness. Now this can happen pretty much to anyone. It's this idea of they know that you're gonna help them with this skill, so they just they don't even try anymore. And that could be as simple as putting their shoes on, eating by themselves. If they know that you're gonna sit down next to them and feed them with a spoon, they're not gonna really learn how to use a spoon. They're gonna expect you feeding them with a spoon for the rest of their lives. That's a really long time to be feeding a kid with a spoon. So we want to try and avoid that learned helplessness by really helping them learn how to do the things that they need to do. And I'm just gonna be frank, after talking to many, many people who have siblings with Down syndrome, who have children with Down syndrome, they, they like people doing stuff for them. So we have to be strong. If they know that something is hard, because a lot of things, is they're really hard for them. If they know that something is hard for them, they're gonna do everything in the world to try and avoid doing it. Either getting themselves distracted by a toy, walking into another room, running out the front door, saying that they're hungry. If they know that that's gonna get you as a parent distracted, they're gonna do everything they can to make that happen. And that is learned helplessness. So we wanna be aware of that. Let's talk about some positives that you can just really lean on when you're working with your kid that has Down syndrome. One of them is they have an amazing long-term memory. Have any of you guys noticed that? Because I certainly have. Uh, my daughter like can point to something and have like this memory from a long time ago that I, I barely remember. They're also really, really smart. And, like almost a little bit too smart sometimes. 
They just have some developmental delays. They have low tone, so they're not able to do things as easily as other people are able to do, but they are smart as a whip and they can be manipulative but they can also remember things and they can be a joy in our life and do things that we would never expect that they would do. Surprise us every day. So be aware of that too. When a child with Down syndrome is learning, and this totally includes occupational therapy type stuff, you wanna make sure you have a good environment, you wanna make sure you have all the right tools that you need, whether it's a therapy swing, a chair with a ball in the middle of it, writing utensils, pointers, all the things. You want a good, healthy learning environment, learning tools, equipment, all the stuff. You wanna find ways to motivate your child. I'm gonna tell you what, motivating them is huge. You have to find ways, very creative ways, to get them really excited about the things that you're about to do with them. I mean, really excited, seriously. I am in the middle of decorating our bathroom as a disco party because I want that room to be really cool so she'll consistently go in there. And I'm gonna talk about a little bit more with the excitement kind of thing when I bust out my little school box that I have for her. I'll show you in just a second. Breaking things up into smaller steps is huge because big steps are overwhelming and then you just don't wanna do them and you quit. So those big giganto puzzles, if they see that big giganto puzzle, they're probably going to just, you know, quit and not do it or run away, or throw it across the room, all the things that they do to try and avoid doing it. You wanna make sure that you're building success, that they can see the success, and you compliment them, you encourage them, give them words of affirmation, like all those things, right? Great job, you know, you know. Of course, practice, practice, practice. Repetition builds confidence, and they store it in their long-term memory, and then they know it. And of course, follow their cues, because it is pretty common for them to get a little bit tired before other kids will. But if they're not tired and they're just getting away with things or trying to get away with things, um, make sure you know the difference from experience and push them through if you know it's not a fatigue thing. It's always good to say like just one more or three more pieces and I always try to end on a happy note. And also you the teacher in the session, you the therapist in the session, you the parent in the session because you are the one in control, always always in control. Even if you give them choices, you're still in control of the situation. So it's a lot of positive, positive learning. You're in control, motivation, repetition, and being really excited about things that may not be that exciting for you and watching out for them trying to get out of things, being aware of that. So let me talk about some curriculum. So I have been binge reading this book. That's right. It's a pretty thick book. Actually, the back of it has a lot of worksheets. So, um, you know, give me that. Been taking notes, been learning pretty much as much as I can about a child with Down syndrome. So this is called Teaching Reading to Children with Down Syndrome, like, you know, perfect book for us. So this book is called Teaching Reading to Children with Down Syndrome, A Guide for Parents and Teachers. And it, all the stuff that I told you, I kind of got that from both our speech therapist experience and from this book. So if you don't have this book and you do have a child that has Down syndrome or you're working with a child that has Down syndrome, get this book, read through it. It's an, it's, it looks scary when you open it up, but it really is, it is an easy read. It's gonna go through the history, it's gonna talk about their personality, it's gonna talk about you know their auditory memory, visual learner, but it's gonna talk about all these things, setting the stage for success, individualizing it for your child, characteristics of how to teach them how to read. She has a whole reading program inside this book. Really good book. Now this lady that wrote the teaching reading to children with Down syndrome inspired another lady, Mrs. Terry Brown, who wrote an amazing program that we are starting this year called So Happy to Learn. Actually, as I record this video, I I've started the curriculum. I've actually also recorded a video of our first day doing it, and that's gonna come out soon. Uh, probably next week or the week after, we'll see. But yeah, it's really fun. So, okay, I'm gonna show you what we have. This is her learning box. Now, it was suggested by So Happy to Learn to go to Michael's and get a nice little box, but instead I, I had her paint the box and decorate it. We did have her name on here, but it's already falling off. I have to replace that or write it in a big giant marker. But you get a box. So Happy to Learn is an online program. So you're gonna do a lot of printing, a lot of binding, a lot of copying, stapling, 
watching videos, conference calls, reading up. They have a Facebook page that you can actually join. And when you join it, you connect with other parents. You can actually talk to Ms. Brown yourself through Facebook. It's a really good program so far, which it actually, when I went onto a forum, it was a homeschooling forum on Facebook or group. And I said, what program do you guys use to teach kindergarten? I got like, so happy to learn, so happy to learn, so happy to learn. So, and I was just like, well, I guess I really don't have a choice, do I? I mean, I do, I totally have a choice, but if there's a lady out there that spent over 30 years specifically working with kids that have Down syndrome and developing a reading program to teach them how to read, um, why am I not trying that program? It's kind of sort of a no-brainer. But if it doesn't work, it doesn't work and I'm gonna find something new. Every child is unique and different and as a parent, we get to have the gift of finding the best curriculum out there for them. So let me show you what's in her little learning box. So I do have some essential oils. That's something that she suggests doing, putting on the child. I have a spray bottle, can't find it. She actually pulled the box down and brought the spray bottle to me because she wanted to do the box, which according to Miss Brown is huge. Like that's what you want your child to do is want to learn. So we, I just have the lavender in there right now. Okay, this is her pointer, it's huge. So I also have a little pencil. Um, sometimes she wants to use this. She likes to stick it under her arm and do this, but this is going to help her when she's pointing from word to word as she's reading. I have an easy button. Why? Because that was easy. We want to make sure she knows it's easy. So she keeps doing it. It's a little toys in here that she can play with. I have a glue stick for me when we were making some books. So let me show you the curriculum. So we are working on learning how to read people in our family. So she drools, and so what I've done is put this in a plastic sheet, but the cards are paper, and she just puts them on the card. So there's this matching activity, a lot of repetition. This is the book that we made, and the video, by the way, that I recorded is us making this book and reading through this book, but this is actually her family. I see daddy. And then we have happy sheets. And so here's some of the ones that she did. This is go stop. We haven't done this yet, but this is mom, cat. And this is when she's going to start writing the letters. These are strips that you can use when making a book. Cause there's a lot of making of books, reading of books. Actually the books that you do read, you can print off. Let me show you those. This is the IC book that you can print off and bind. And as you can see, it's pretty simple. I see a tree, I see a pizza, I see a pig. And then along with that book, I also have the cards. I did these different, so I'm trying some different varieties here, but the point is, is this is a game. She matches the word to the card, she matches the picture to the picture, she matches the word to the word. We just kind of play around with it and see what level she's at. And Naomi is pretty sharp, so she's moving pretty quickly. We're just trying to get her to memorize these sight words right now. We have a word book where we just have words. Same words, ball. It's not I see a ball, it's ball. Here's girl, which is one of the words. So what she does is she's going to have those 10 sight words that she practices over, or you practice, over and over again with your child, and they memorize them, and once they memorize them, you give them a little check, and then you add more sight words to the group, and over a period of time, you're gonna have a stack of sight words. So that's kind of the premise behind it, and of course, like I said, there is writing with the writing sheets that I showed you before. And here's one we did with circling and saying the letters and the words and then the sentence. Miss Brown has a whole YouTube channel. I'm gonna link it down below. You can see her working with kids that have Down syndrome. I mean, there are like 600 plus videos. They're really short videos all different ages, all different abilities. I've just been binge watching them, just trying to learn how she talks to them. It's a fool, I mean, it's training, is basically what it is. And so right now, I'm totally into it. That's what's taken up a lot of my summer. A lot of things are taken up my summer, but that's taken a good 30, 30 minutes to an hour a day in my summer. When it comes to other things, such as sciences and histories, and look, to be honest, in my opinion, those things, we're not gonna sit down and get a textbook out and try to teach her and have her answer. We're not doing that. We're just going to enjoy those things. I enjoy them. My other kids enjoy them. I read a lot to my other kids and I feel like she's just gonna soak it all up. 
when it comes to Bible and scripture studies and those spiritual type things, I really think it's all about experience and making sure that we're talking about it more in the home. Our family has been really, really convicted that you need to learn things by doing things, experiencing things, not just from a textbook, especially when it comes to those non-skill type subjects. And that includes everything from learning scriptures and Bible and things about God and relationships and character building, all the way to sciences and histories and mathematics and art and all that stuff. Yeah, skill building is going to be your reading and your mathematics and sometimes you can say foreign language, but foreign language is, is experience based. So I hope this video was super duper helpful and it gave you some ideas, some pointers and tips. Of course, there's some other ideas just to throw out there. We've done handwriting without tears. We've watched like a ton of leapfrog. We've done apps. We've played around with some apps here and there. Like I said, I really think the best way for her to learn is through hands-on experiences that she experienced experiences with her family in a positive environment with lots of encouragement and motivation. We want to make it fun. We want her to enjoy it. So there's that. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Let me know in the comment section down below what you thought. If you have any tips that you want to add to this video, some programs that you found to be really helpful with your kids that you want to share, go for it. I love it. You guys suggest things to me that I've never heard of and I go researching it and it's just fun. I love this community. So hope to see you guys in our next video. And don't forget to check out that playlist if you just want to learn from more homeschool moms. So thank you guys so much and uh, see you in our next video. Bye.